hello and welcome to the part B so now what we need to do because we have already mapped the rule input with the node input when we have selected the form right so this is the form which we have selected I guess it's loading or let's see if this is not selected okay let me select it again AT and this is the form so I have clicked yes previously so now these are maps so how I can see these node inputs I need to click inside the data and then inside the inputs we have all the node inputs so now you can see that these rule inputs which are coming from the interfaces now these rule inputs are mapped with these node inputs right so this is my node inputs and now I can map these node inputs with my process variable right so if I already have a process variable of amount I can map it with the amount and what I can do I can select from here right so if there is no if in, in the drop down it is not available it means there is no variables like this right because this is a new process variable there is no process variable amount and details and category and cancel so what we can do we can directly click on this plus icon new process variable and it will automatically put the details and the configuration i just need to click ok so now this process variable is created and i have also mapped it and you can see in the interface also if you remember we have used values and save into right so why we are using save into because the value which is coming from the interface that we want to save inside the process variable right if we want to send the data inside the interface then we will use this option which is value so in this scenario we don't want that value we just want whatever the user is writing in the interface i want that detail so that will be stored inside the amount process variable so this is what we have configured save into only in this the details also i will click a uh, click on this one and i will create new process variable category also i'll do the same okay and cancel also right so now i have saved the date details coming from the interface inside these node inputs and then inside the process variable so this is the configuration which we need to do to save the values from interface to process variables so now my first part is done form is selected and the data is configured the node inputs are configured to the process variable now the assignment so in this case because uh, i am just doing testing and i don't have site or i don't have any other interface to show this interface so what i will do because we will only debug this process model so what i can do i can um, you directly assign this task to process initiator so whoever will be assigning this particular task or what we can say whoever will be starting the debugging part then that task will be assigned to that person right so i will select process initiator so whenever i will click on start process for debugging i am the initiator in that scenario and this task will assign to me right so we will see where we can see the assigned task and uh, what are the ways from which we can open the assigned task to us we'll see that i will uncheck this because uh, whenever this task will assign to me i will get notified so i don't want to get this notification so i will uncheck this this is what we need to do that's all and other tabs we will exp see later on because right now this is not needed escalations and exceptions so i just need to click ok and my work is done with the user input task right so let's test this right before going further before writing the data into the db let's test if this is working or not what i need to do i need to click on save and after saving i can start this process model by clicking start process for debugging and you can see this process instance is created and I'm right now I'm inside the monitoring view. So I can also right click this task and I can view this form, but I don't want that. I will see the other view. So what I can do to see my assigned task, I can go inside the tempo. And what is a tempo? So tempo is a site provided by Appian to access few features like news, task, records, reports and actions so this is a site built in appian but appian provided this for us right we, we have not created this and we are just using this for example whenever i will be uh, assigning any task to me then 
it, the task will come under this task list. You can see this is assigned to me and this is the assignee. This is the task name and assigned on, right? And I can click on this user input task and I can fill out this. So this is my task, right? This is how in Appian task works. We can save the draft, we can reassign it, or we can submit the form by filling out all the details. So in my case, let's fill out the details here. Expand categories is gadget and just test. After this, I will be submitting the form. So now my task is complete. I will come back to my process model and let's refresh this. So you can see this process is completed because we have completed the task. And let's see the process variable details. So how we can see the process variable details? I need to go inside the process details. And process history is the history of all the nodes. Variables is the list of variables. You can see I got the values of the variables. I am getting in a hundred, one thousand in amount and gadgets and test. So I am getting the correct values here. So now my second task is to write these values into the DB, right? So for that purpose, I will use one smart service which is database data services. This one write to data store entity. I just need to drag and drop it on this line. So now it, it is attached to this line and now I can configure this right. Let's rename this to uh, right expense and also this one expense form right. So this is very important whenever we are designing a process model make sure the naming convention of every node is correct and it's very like it's, it's the user friendly so user can understand the other developer can understand right. So now I need to configure this right to data store entity. So this is why we have created the constant of data store entity in previous lecture. And now I need to select that constant inside the data input and then data store entity. So you can see this is asterisk is coming. It's mandatory. We need to select the data store entity and I can use a constant for that. And my constant is AT and DSE this one. That's all. After that, I need to select what is the value of variable and which variable I wanted to write. So for that, I need to create a new input and I need to rename this, let's say, expense data. And the text is, uh, the type is ET. Expense data and the value is not multiple. So let's remove this. And then I need to give the value. So my value is inside the process variable. Okay, so now we cannot select this thing, right? Because because the configuration which we have done, we have not used the CDT, right? So we were using the different different variables for different different configuration. So I will show you the interface, and now you can see. We are using the amounts, details, and categories and cancel, right? We are using different different rule inputs for different different configuration. So this is not what we want. We want to use a single CDT, right? Now you can see that if we are using separate variables for separate fields, then it will be a mess, right? Because we need to handle all these variables separately. We need to do some configuration inside the process model to write into the DB, right? So that's not what I want. So right now, uh, my scenario is this. So let's do one thing. What we can do to make this work, we can go inside the data and let's again select data store entity. I guess it is discarded. So I need to select constant and ET and uh, data store entity expense data table. And that's all. Now I will again select the new input and I will name this expense data. Now I will select this ET, which is expense data. And now inside the value, I need to do some modifications because I'm having the values inside separate separate variables. So now I need to use type bank. Type bank. So why we need to use type bank? Because this is how we can reference to the CDT type bank is used to 
select that CDT. So my CDT is ET and this one ET expense data and then I need to click enter and then I need to select the variables which whichever I am having. So I'm having the expense amount this one so I will map my PV bank amount here and then I have expense category so for that I will map my PV bank and category and finally we have expense details so I will map my PV bank details so this is what we need to do if we are not using the CDT right if we will be using a CDT then we don't have to do this we can directly pass the process variable of that CDT type but currently we don't have that so that's why we need to do this so this is what we have done and my configuration is done my data store entity is selected as well as well as my expense data is selected right so now i just need to try this if this is working or not and uh, i also have to publish this because my work is done right so whenever the work is done the final configuration is done we can publish the process model and let's click ok and uh, let's save this and let's debug this so now this task is assigned to me i need to go again inside the tempo i will refresh this i have this expense form task let's open this i will put some amount let's say 122 and the category is home and the detail is home test and let's submit this again let's go inside the monitoring let's refresh this and my task is completed you can see this is successful there is no errors this write to data store entity is successful so let's check if we got the data or not inside the db so let's refresh this db table and i got the data right i got 122 and home test and home so this is what we need to do to write the data into the db right so this is all we need to do but this in this process model there are few things there are uh, error handling techniques and a few other things are missing so that we will cover inside the next lecture